of the Bill Davis, David Peterson, and Bob Wright. We get $13 million out of the residential tax fund. 700, over $700 million is money that 10 years ago we would have been able to use to do things like this. That's a fundamental challenge. The good news is, Premier McGinty recognizes it, Tory recognizes it, I've no doubt how the African will recognize it, and we've got a chance now to change that for good, and that will allow us to invest properly in the kinds of things that you're talking about. We have a question over here. Um, this, is, this question is for Mary Ellen. I'm Michael Gray from Preserve Archaeological Sites in Toronto, and the Toronto Waterfront Revitalization Corporation has had an archaeological assessment for two and a half years in its possession, and a, um, it has not consulted with any heritage organization or the museum's department about what sites should be preserved. Now, Mayor Miller, you have had in, in your possession from Heritage Toronto a document talking about the significance of specific sites, and you have not acted upon this. Can you tell me what you're going to be doing for preservation on the East Bayfront, the West Islands, and the Portlands areas? And I'd also like to hear from what the other candidates are going to say to this as well. Okay. So I can tell you what I know about the waterfronts archaeological assessment. Um, the uh, stage one of Chichester was completed in 2004. Uh, I love the word they had consulted with the museum, uh, but uh, that's an arm's length corporation and at that point in time I wasn't on the board, so I wouldn't be in a position to know that. The, the completed East Bay Front, West Islands, and the Portlands area, um, and uh, a number of potentially significant features were identified, including uh, NAMS roller boats, pulse and ironworks located within East Bay Front. Um, and we have mechanisms in place to protect archaeological resources within the waterfront. In the case of East Bay Front, the relevant owner to NAMS roller boat are required to complete a management plan for completing an archaeological assessment of their lands prior to lifting of the holding vital. That's very specific. But I think my answer to you is the city as an institution uh, is aware of these issues. The archaeological plan for the waterfront is proceeding. I was not aware that consultation with appropriate stakeholders hadn't happened. I'm a bit surprised, but uh, I'm on the waterfront board, and we can certainly ensure that relevant stakeholders like the museums are included on a going forward basis. Stephen Well, the mayor, the mayor's answer is a very good answer. I, I, when I was listening to your question, listening to the answer, I was thinking again how wonderful it is that you have a specific complaint, and yet you're here with that complaint because 10 years ago, uh, there wouldn't have been the foundation for a complaint. I, I have uh, read the reports about the ar ar archaeological uh, find in the Portland, and there was one that um, it was last year, and, and there was some excavation done by uh, Fort York and old timbers. And you know, 20 years ago, they would have just been bowed down. No one would have heard about it. There been no, there been no mapping of it. There been no consultation at all. And so you're absolutely right. There should be more consultation, and all the stakeholders should be involved. But I think it's a pretty darn good thing that we're moving in the right direction. Just not fast enough, but I agree with you on that point. Jane Dufield. I'm glad you raised this. I was unaware that uh, you had not been consulted. And I think one of the problems, one of the reasons why the waterfront hasn't moved forward faster is because all the parties don't sit down at the table ever together. And those parties are the Waterfront Corporation, the Port Authority, the City, and Petco. And uh, you, I think there's a basic problem in the city. And one of those is, I talked about the loss of local voice. We need the local voice, the heritage, far more involved. And uh, if I'm there of the city, because heritage and history is a, uh, will be a priority and it's a great interest of mine. Uh, you will be consulted, you'll be involved, and uh, you should have been. I'm allowed to hold up my sound. So. <laughs> um, but, but you are allowed a brief question. I will ask a brief question, and it will be directed at whoever feels competent to answer the question. <laughs> if the First Nations peoples take the same action on the claim from the foot, a front street sub as they do in Caledonia.
What plan do you have in order to solve the problem? Stephen Lindrew, I'll give that to you. Just start off. I, uh, I'm very glad. I'm very glad to uh, to answer that first because I've dealt with land claims in the Yukon and BC, and I've commented extensively on radio about the Caledonia situation. And uh, first of all, I understand the frustration of the First Nations because the, both the provincial government and the federal government in this country have been absolutely guilty of not doing anything with land claims. So I do not condone breaking up law by the First Nations in Caledonia. I do understand the frustration, and it's very legitimate, and it's up to the governments to resolve those things on a timely matter. So specifically with your question, I would have the, the rule of law upheld, but I would also make sure that there is a commitment to have any such claim resolved within six months. That doesn't mean the ownership. You have the claim resolved in a court or in, a, in, a, in a, an arbitration, and then after it's resolved, you have to deal with the, the uh, fallout from that. I know those matters very well, having dealt with them, and I understand the frustration, and that uh, both governments are, uh, should be severely criticized. James Field. I've had uh, discussions with Brian LaForme about this, and I've been uh, doing my best to follow the progress I agree it's, it's very slow. Um, what I do think is uh, that Brian LaForme has told me that he understands it won't necessarily be land, it could be money, it could be buildings, it could be a combination of things. And so as mayor of the city, I would work cooperatively with the uh, the of new credit and also uh, with other levels of government. One thing that is important to me is to have an Aboriginal cultural center for the city. I think we've been missing the boat with tourism. This is what we need. This is what people in Australia, England, Germany would come to Toronto for, as well as Aboriginal people and uh, other Canadians. I think that Ontario Place would have been a good location. Um, it's something that I've been working on. I still intend to see it through. Unfortunately, our RFP has gone out recently, but it's something that Brian LaForme suggests, and that is waterfront property. What has unfortunately happened with the waterfront is a certain greed and a certain competition, and there's precious little bit left. And so um, that would be a priority for me, and that could be also part of the land claim. David Miller. Well, what, what I've been trying to do as mayor is uh, build relationships of mutual respect uh, with the Aboriginal community of Toronto. And I meet regularly with Aboriginal leaders, including Chief Reform and others. Um, and I think it's that relationship of mutual respect is the foundation that's needed uh, so that the city ensures that it is working cooperatively both with the Aboriginal community on broader issues and online claims issues. And I, I think that relationship is what is necessary if there is a, although I certainly don't anticipate that if there is the kind of situation you described. Uh, I might like have just comment that those words were empty just because I, I just would like you to know that I, I speak for traditional chiefs and I represent over 950 in the Americas and I do not feel respectful. Okay, so it's time for the question on the my question, which is for all three candidates, has to do with fundraising. More specifically, how and when can we get the philanthropic floodgates open to blow a few more bucks heritage's way? Because at the moment, all the big capital C cultural institutions are reaping the benefit from people's pockets. There's a cultural renaissance going on in this city for, like, for performing arts, art galleries, and so on. But we in Heritage appear to have had that go by us. Now specifically, I have and my board have raised money to help our three assigned Heritage sites. But it's been very difficult because every time you go to somebody, not the private sector, but every time you go to somebody asking them for money, they say, you're going to have a very difficult battle to do so because nobody wants to give money to the city because the city is not a charity, it's government. My question, therefore, is specifically, have or could you include in your, your platform a mechanism to make to create, to help make for the land to be like we've seen in the big institutions come our way? In other words, 
put a mechanism in place that would give people who want to give and can give money the option to choose heritage. And as Mr. LeDrew said, move the prevailing and positive prejudice away from the big cultural institutions and help buildings like this and Colbert Lodge and all the many other little institutions that are struggling. First of all, sir, thank you for your service. I uh, imagine you don't get any thanks for sitting on that combined board, and you deserve it. Those are the three important institutions in the city. The answer is yes, I actually have included in my platform, I alluded to it earlier, is creating a partnerships office within the city. And the intent of that is to create partnerships on our Clean and Beautiful initiative, create a partnership on our Youth Opportunities Program in the 13 priority neighborhoods, and it can be used as well to create partnerships for heritage. Uh, and the, I think the challenge is we haven't had a place in the city that's responsible for this. One caveat, there's important private sector foundations like the Toronto Community Foundation, and we shouldn't be uh, replicating their role or competing with them. And I think there's an opportunity actually, and I, I suggest that perhaps we need to get the boards to sit down with the Toronto Community Foundation as well and talk about the importance of heritage and see if they might be able to mount a campaign as part of their work on building this city. Uh, but yes, it's in my platform, it's a partnerships office, and it can do exactly what you said. Jean Field. As much as I think fundraising in communities that are interested in particular heritage sites is good for enthusiasm and spirit, I agree that your funding should not be uh, so much dependent upon it. And uh, I think you've given us a really good suggestion tonight. The money that's gone to improve the cultural sites has largely come from the private sector. I don't think anything from the city and a bit from the province. And so I would, as mayor, have the same kind of historical or heritage renaissance. And I also think you could look at something like a matching grants program or some kind of rebate that we could offer to the private sector um, to entice them and so it would be worth their while. Stephen Ledoux. Um, I have two, two, two part answer to your, to your situation. First of all, I'm a believer in campaigns. And I've been in a few campaigns in my life, and uh, as you can see from the last three weeks and the next two and a half weeks, I believe that campaigns count. So part of it, and I don't know what campaigns you've been running, part of it is to attune it. But there's something else I heard in your question, which was an institutional problem or a legal problem with the matter of charitable status. And, and you're absolutely right. When you deal with museums and other you know, standalone functions, uh, which are dealt with or created mainly by Act of Rich Parliament, they do have a charity status. And I, have, I will frankly admit to you, I don't know the, the problems, the intricacies of it. I assume that they're owned by the city of Toronto. Um, but there must be a way without alienating them to the city of Toronto to be able to get a charitable status for you, and then you're off to the races. And yes, I would work for that. But then, Chair, can I just have a point of information? The, the city can issue charitable tax receipts. We can now. I, I understand the complexity people don't want to give to the city because it's a government, but we can now issue charitable tax receipts. It's done all the time. Uh, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, how many uh, heritage properties does the city actually have? And, uh, and uh, my question to all of you, uh, uh, how would you make those uh, properties uh, more available to small business? Available in what sense for use? Uh, for use. Okay, so uh, uh, David Hillis, you have um, that? We have, uh, as of the end of this year, listed and designated and properties in heritage conservation districts, 7,403. Uh, and your, your questions, and if you take out the heritage conservation districts, it's a little bit, uh, it's about 3,200 listed and designated. Your question is a really interesting one, and I, I, um, I don't have a simple answer, but Jane Jacobs said this wonderful thing that what a city needs is old buildings, because that's where entrepreneurialism flourishes. And I think one of the things, going back to the previous question, is you know you might be able to use a tip in a place like Leslieville, for example, that needs some rejuvenation. Perhaps there's a place where you could, 
and that would allow some of the properties to be available for, for small businesses. Um, techniques that have been used to encourage small businesses to relocate in old buildings include forming BIAs at a very early stage. It's what we've done with the uh, Liberty District, and it's been very, very successful, and it's booming. Um, other techniques include making sure that adjacent public spaces work, so you bring back traffic. And I'm open to other ideas. I, I think your point is, uh, is a great one. Let's make a heritage actually live and be vibrant in the life by ensuring commercial success and you know, entrepreneurs use those buildings. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have anything to add to that. Stephen LaDrew. I think that uh, you have to make a distinction between uh, designated buildings and the heritage buildings that the city actually owns because of your courses. Uh, most designated buildings are uh, owned in private, uh, by the private sector and they're not available for use. But I, I certainly take to heart your suggestion that when the city owns buildings, whether they be heritage or not, they should be put out to, uh, you know, to, to be used as uh, you know, incubator sites or, or other small business and uh, you know, let's just get on with it. Too often when the city has a building, I know there used to be um, um, the Squally on King Street East years ago and uh, the city uh, you know, forced the Squallies up and uh, I, I would like to say it's under this mayor, but it was, it was, I haven't stated that. It's great to help. people to uh, uh, review and get involved with. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Please? Um, this petition is um, in response to um, the conservation um, uh, inadequacies of the Toronto Waterfront Revitalization Corporation uh, and the City Planning Department um, as, as a, a uh, um, and this petition is to the Minister of Culture um, to get involved a, uh, uh, and have a, uh, take an active uh, hand in a, uh, preserving a, uh, um, the city's, her the city's a, uh, industrial and cultural heritage, not its built heritage, but its, a, uh, um, its 
its archaeological heritage on the Toronto waterfront lands and a, to ensure that a, um, this is a, uh, um, done a, uh, uh, as quickly as possible before um, development proceeds. Very good. And um, perhaps a message, you were able to speak with mayoral candidates today. Yes. Perhaps uh, one of them will be re-elected or yes. others will be elected. Um, what message would you have for uh, incumbent city councillors as well as any, uh, we have a number of open wards in the city, seven, so we will have seven new city councillors. Uh, what message would you like to tell them, inform them, about uh, preservation of the waterfront and our heritage? Toronto in recent years has spent $500,000 developing an archaeological a, uh, master plan and we need the political will to implement the recommendations of that master plan and we need to make sure that the heritage community is consulted about what is archaeologically significant and, a, uh, and not leave this up to a, uh, the discretion of uh, a consultant archaeologist. Very good. And uh, perhaps the last question. Um, uh, we had one of these forums just before the previous election three years ago. Uh, this one is actually pretty, it's much closer to the election date. Um, after the uh, sexiness and the glitz of an election, uh, putting spotlight on, the, on these issues, uh, disappears, diminishes, what is it that residents and citizens of the city should be um, uh, harping, perhaps as a word, on their city councillors who are elected between now and 2010, or the mayor, him or herself, uh, what is it that uh, Torontonians should be doing between elections? We need to have something systemically in place to protect the, our archaeological heritage. Right? We cannot leave this a, uh, um, to be a um, catch to happen every time a development application a, uh, uh, is made. We need a conservation plan in place a, uh, um, based on our, the archaeological master plan and what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is a, uh, um, uh, rigidly enforced. Very good. Um, I'd like to uh, wrap up by asking you again for your name and your affiliation and please read out the uh, website URL with okay. the petition that uh, we trust everyone will consider <laughs> signing. Okay. My name is Michael Gregg. I'm with a Preserve Archaeological Sites in Toronto Coalition. A, our web, our web a, uh, you can sign the petition at a, a w, sorry, at http colon backslash backslash www dot the petition site dot com backslash tank action backslash one eight one seven 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 five five zero. Mr. Greg, thank you for your time. Okay, take care. Bye. Thanks very much. Okay, you have one.